Hi, this is Love from Tits and Giggles Podcast. I love using Anchor because it's easy to operate and I can just pick up the phone and speak my mind whenever I want. I can get, I love the podcast availability because I can get it out to multiple platforms at the same time without having to go. It automatically generates your RSS feed and you get it out to your listeners. And I love the background music and all the sound effects. Loving Anchor so much. You should try it for yours. This is Love Again with Tits and Giggles Podcast. What's up, Tits and Giggles? I am back again. But I want to talk about a serious subject, ladies, because this podcast is really always dedicated to my ladies and just us and our safety and our happiness and our everything. So this one tonight is going to be about human trafficking because it is still happening. It's very serious. It's very like it can happen to anybody. And I have several stories, some as small as Target and Walmart, people just watching like constantly like ladies, 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 be careful of your surroundings. You know, people can cut your Achilles heel just being in a car. And I know we have enough stuff to worry about, but this is just with all the stuff piled on. I don't want you to get human traffic because, yeah, it is real it is all real. I mean, it happens to all kinds of women. You know, it you know, it all has to do with money, obviously. You have to follow the money on all situations. How are people making money? If drugs are if there's a drought with drugs, if there's a drought with if they're cracking out down on this, cracking down on that, how are they doing this? Even in this Roe versus Wade situation now where women are going to be forced to have babies, I fear that we're going to see more children because there's a story about foster kids, you know, DFS, putting kids into human trafficking. It is a thing like there's so many things like sometimes I feel like we think of human trafficking as like, you know, some far fetched like truck driving ring or this or that but no it is happening like just even in places that you wouldn't even imagine and people that you supposedly trust so I'm gonna play some stories um I'm gonna check back in talk to you guys about them but yeah I want you to hear these accounts of this and we'll discuss and just the safety of it all so first is a cop a trusted cop and he's going to tell the story of stacy uh someone that he saved from human trafficking so we're gonna put him up 16 years old and she was from a broken home and she wanted to eat so she was working at a mcdonald's and uh and what a person came in and began to talk to her a female by the way was recruiting her she didn't know it and and kept telling her hey my my brother is has a call center and you can make three times what you make here well that's what it was about and he's signing people up at the local hotel she shows up at the local hotel and long story short she was beaten she was drugged and told in her own words you are owned and you're owned by me and then she was sexually assaulted 10 to 12 times a day for the next few weeks and she was drugged during that time and she was sold to another trafficker at that time who also beat her and uh and in fact the the predators that were coming in and they were paying there was a couple that would pay extra money that after the sex act if they could beat her and of course the trafficker was saying stay off the body i mean stay off the face and just the body so she they were able to do that and fortunately for her like any other entrepreneur he wanted to cut back on cost and so what he did this trafficker did is he started he quit giving her as much drugs as he had been giving her because he wanted to save money and she was sober-minded enough and uh to to get out of that escape 
uh, in, into our arms, fortunately. And she's, as far as I know, she's doing okay today, and she's in, in therapy. But she was owned. She, they, she was sold. She was beaten. She was all in. You know, sexually assaulted 10 to 12 times a day. And uh, and who was looking for her? Nobody. Nobody was looking for her. And uh, so that's what the picture is to me. She was a human slave. Right. And we have many other stories just like that that are absolutely overwhelming. So, yeah, that story is very heartbreaking. It's sad. And... I know me, even me personally, I went on a girl's trip to Miami, and if you ever go to Miami, you will see, especially if you stay at a nice hotel, you will see a lot of young girls coming there, and you just have to almost wonder, I mean, you, I mean, we're, we love to live in this, like, blinders on type of society but then we'll like scream to the top of our lungs about rights and slavery and all this and then it's like slavery and rights are being taken away every day and there's evil people I mean as you can see in this story this there was a couple that I mean people are sick and so like even me like even when I think back and when I was in that hotel and I saw those young girls and there was a woman that was with them and she was paying like cash at the count in the hotel. I'm like the hotel. You would think like the hotel because we were sitting at the Leals, which is nice. It's a nice hotel. And this lady, she was like had a stack of cash and. I like anytime I'm on vacation, I get up early to go walk on the beach. So I, I get I was up at like five and Miami's an hour ahead of me. So it was only like six my time. But I saw this lady like paying a stack of cash for like the rooms and everything. And if you ever saw the movie Sola, it's kind of the same situation. These girls, they want to make money and then they end up thinking they're you know, look at Galene Maxwell. She's a woman recruiter in the horrors and nightmares about that. But, you know, even when I saw those young girls and this lady paying in cash for the room, she was paying in cash at like a stack of money. And I saw these young girls and they looked unhappy. Like they were dressed nice, but they looked unhappy. Their hair was kind of disheveled. It just looked like they were passed around. And I just... I was looking at this hotel because a lot of them stay in these hotels and I'm thinking like, this is bigger than what even I know. And I mean, you kind of just want to get the word out there, but it's just kind of crazy. You know, even when I look back on like situations where I thought I saw girls, you know, being trafficked and it's crazy. It's like it's crazy and that's why I'm I'm passionate about this because I want to warn young girls I know that sometimes they think there's not other options and I know that fast money is money but is not the trauma behind it is not even worth it and then the people you think are trusting you're trusting you know these women that are acting like they're befriending you mm-mm so let's get into some more stories. But yeah, that was just one that came to my mind that, you know, and I like to know, like, have you ever came across a situation where you thought someone was being trafficked? Oh, let's go to the next story here. Um, here we go. Needs to be shared. It happened to my husband and I, and it's completely unbelievable. I haven't told a lot of people, but I don't feel like I need to because I don't want it to happen to somebody else and me not speak up. A couple weekends ago, my husband and I went away for just a quick little weekend trip for our anniversary, just the two of us. We went down to a little hotel in uh, Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. I don't want to say where, um, but it had a restaurant attached to it. So when we got there Friday night, we went down to the restaurant, sat at the bar. Why not? Had a couple fruity little drinks, you know, pretending we were on vacation um, and sat at the bar talking to the bartender. Bartender was awesome. We clicked right away. Really cool guy. About an hour later, um, about two fruity drinks in, this couple comes and asks to sit down next to us in the chairs that are available. Really nice, almost too nice, and started asking some really interesting questions. 
part two of watch out for this new human trafficking tactic. It happened to my husband and I. Anyway, so this really nice couple comes and sits down. Like I said, beautiful gal. Says she's a mom, starts asking questions about where my kids are, who has my kids, where do we live, things like that. Anyways, she's like, hey, let's take a shot together and let's take a picture. So we order some just stupid fruity shot, nothing crazy. Um, she takes a picture, sends it to someone, and about three minutes later starts really getting cozy up to me, asking questions about my pregnancies. Um, did they go full term? How healthy are my babies? Asked to see pictures. Are they cute? Things like that. Um, in the meantime, the guy is talking to my husband wants to take a shot with my husband. He's like, yeah, great guy, why not? Who cares? When he turns around to take this shot with my husband, someone sitting next to them spikes my husband's drink. Wow. I'm not gonna play a thousand of her parts, but clearly they were about to get taken for a ride. Um, and this is a couple. Let's go on to the next story. This is this girl, her and her sister almost got taken by an Uber driver, which super dangerous. And I use Uber a lot, but Uber is super sketchy. Um, I watched this show. There's a show on HBO about them and how much crime happens within Uber. And as any corporation that has crime, they don't report it. Um, so let's get into this. I can't reiterate enough about being safe and these stories just hopefully give you like okay I need to like watch out for that so here is my next story you took your first trip to DC with your sister and had an amazing time until it was time to leave the event that you came to DC for you call an uber the uber is already super sketchy the Uber asks you for your ID because they don't believe you or your sister is over 18. You show them the ID, which you probably shouldn't because they probably just wanted to know where you lived in D.C., thinking you were a D.C. resident. You show them the ID. You start the ride. You and your sister both notice that they start making very weird hand signals in the like mirror to the back car. But you think you're overthinking it, but you both make sure that like you have 911 on your phones because you're scared and you're going to be able to call any minute if you have to. Then you ask if you could roll down your window, but the driver is really agitated and doesn't want to let you, but you insist. You notice that your child locks are on, and for some reason, when they roll down the window, the child lock comes off. I didn't know that that happens, but you notice that. So you keep your hand on the lock, making sure that it doesn't relock again. You're unfamiliar with the area, but you start to notice that you're getting closer to your hotel, so you have a breath of, you know, relief. But you say that you can get out here when you're near the hotel, and he says no. And you and your sister look at each other, and you're like, what do you mean no? He says no, well, just waves no, and speeds up past the hotel. Us not realizing that he probably just wanted Uber to think that he dropped us off. But since your hand was on the door, it didn't relock, so you swing the door open. You swing the door open. You and your sister are literally dragging your heels, making commotion through the streets while this man is still driving. And I guess that started him. People are looking. You hop out of the car. You and your sister are safe. You're cussing the guy out and he speeds off and you write a complaint to uber and they call you the next day but you really don't have any follow-up on what happens after and you're terrified and you realize that dc is like a hub for human trafficking and you feel grateful to be alive and you probably never will go back to dc even though dc was such a wonderful city yeah so that was very sketchy even from them asking for the licenses, Uber already has all your information. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they were lucky in the fact and the child lock thing was something I didn't know about, but something I will use in the future because I didn't know that. So these next girls, they were in Target. Um, their sisters and yeah so let's just go right into it because I have a, f a couple of these I want to get through so let's go right into it your 
are seeing this, please stop scrolling, especially if you're a female. We just got home, but I wanted to tell the story because people need to be aware of this. We were shopping in the Tinley Park Target when this man approached me and my sister. He started talking to us, asking us, like, are you guys sisters? You guys are really pretty. You guys should get into modeling, all this stuff. And right away, I knew something was off by the way he was talking to us. As we were in self-checkout, he kept looking at us and going on his phone and texting somebody. As we were checking out our stuff, I noticed that he hid in Starbucks, which is right by the exit. And of course, I had this awful feeling in my stomach even while he was talking to us from before. So I went to an employee and asked for security to escort us out. Right when this man saw that we were talking to security and employee, he got nervous and left. Security made sure that we got in our car safely and made sure that he left before we even got in our car. So ladies, please be careful. Be aware. This happens way more often than you think. And yeah, and even even here at work, like being a woman... We know how dangerous it is. We know that people are sick in the head. And we know that normal people, even just being nice to some people, and I'll say men, um, it could be women too, but they, you know, they can get fixated on you just from you being nice and saying hi. I know even on my job, I lock the door when I'm here because I am here by myself a lot and I don't you know I work at night so like I don't I don't even trust some of the people I work with like you know how it is being a woman even getting in an elevator you have to like we constantly are on guard and it's dangerous out here and I just I'm gonna keep reiterating all the time like safety safety watch your surroundings like observe don't be so fixated on your phones and like I know that we can do that a lot but yeah so this next story is going to be about DFS and you're going to hear a new story about it and how it's growing where DFS is removing children from the home and yeah so let's get into this one I'm going to key it up for you now the most vulnerable Black people. And no plan to get them back. That's what a WBTV investigation has uncovered being carried out by some DSS agencies in our area. Chief investigative reporter Nick Oxner has found the practice was carried out in secret for years. Decisions to take a child from their parents' home are supposed to be made here in a courtroom. State law requires DSS workers to get a judge's order before removing a kid from their home. But in Cleveland County, that process has been taking place in the dark. These records tell part of the story. 11 children taken from their parents in a two-year period without a judge ever weighing in. We can't tell you who they are. We don't know their names. Their families, often some of the most vulnerable in the community. When you reviewed these documents, what was your initial reaction? Well, I can't say I was surprised because these kinds of practices have been seen all over the country. But it was disappointing because what you see revealed here is a blatant violation of children's rights. Richard Wexler runs a nonprofit that advocates for changes to the foster care system. With this process, a caseworker becomes judge, jury, and often family executioner. And no one person should have all that unchecked power over children's lives. It inevitably leads to tragic mistakes a process that starts with this called a temporary guardianship form cleveland county dss director katie swanson reported her agency's use of the form to the north carolina department of health and human services last summer in a response state regulators sent this letter saying the form couldn't be used because a judge has to sign off on children being taken from their homes you don't need this to keep children safe you only, quote, need this for agency. Who's the most? So, yeah, guys. Um, that's a whole nother story about CPS and removing kids from homes. And, you know, like I said, even with this Roe versus Way stuff, there is going to be a lot of child abuse, child neglect, um, I mean, there are so many stories, I mean, of this and 
CPS is coming in, not really check. Not only did they not come in and really check and do their job, but now this, and it's like, you know, our whole everything, it's just people, we have to pay attention. Like, really. Like, we depend on the government to care and people to care, and we put our faith that people are going to do right, but people are still people. They're humans. They are going to, they're going to be, I mean, the money, I'm always going to go back to the money and I'm always going to go back to what is a person's motivation? Like even, you know, we'll, we'll say the police, police, police. Yes, they rob you too at a traffic stop, but what is these workers getting by what is what are their intentions by doing the things they do there's been a lot of cps nightmare stories out there and now add this to the list and so this next girl she's going to speak about how she was experiencing human trafficking in foster care so yeah um let's get into her story sues me for being homeless with a baby. The judge says that I have three requirements and those three requirements was to get a GED, have a bank account, put money on it. He doesn't care where the money's coming from, just put the money in there and to make sure I have stable housing. Now, by this time, I'm 16 years old. I ran into this friend of mine who was who was already working in a strip club and she was living with her boyfriend at the time. And she goes, well, I work at a strip club and I'm like, well, doing what? And she was like, Oh, don't worry. I'm just waitressing. It's not a big deal. I'm just serving drinks. And I use her ID to work in a club. And I'm making about $75 a day at this point. I get home one day and the boyfriend tells me, you can't have your kid back unless you pay me $200 a day. So let's get into her part two. There's another pimp inside the club that hears what's going on. And he asked me to show him who was the guy that was doing all of these, you know, weird things to me. And I did. I can move my kid out of the one guy's house and move it into his house. At least I thought life was peaceful. I'm living in a house with this guy, but this guy has other women living in the house too. So I'm in a hell. So he tells me one day, hey, get dressed, get pretty. We're going to go somewhere. I'm thinking we're going out to dinner. And he drives me to a hotel on the north side of Houston. He pulls up to the hotel. He gives me the key card, pulls out a... He tells me what room to go into. And then he says, if you don't come out with my money, it's going to cost you your life. There was a Navy recruiter who would always talk to me every morning, this Navy recruiter asked me, how am I doing? How you doing turned into me telling him everything about how I was doing. He said, look, I can't do nothing but recruit you in the military and I know you feel like you don't qualify, but if you take this test and if you are determined, I promise you, I'm gonna get you in so you can have a better life for your kids. I made a 54 and got into the military. They gave me two options. It was like, look, either you gonna chip paint and clean ships for your time in the military or you could go be a military police officer. And all I kept thinking about is, oh my God, somebody's gonna put a gun I'm gonna be bad. So this girl turned it around, but literally her story was that they were going to remove her kids unless she could pay for them. And so she got into stripping. And so then from stripping, they, she thought someone was helping her that was at the strip club, which we know a lot of recruitment happens at the strip club. And they were pretty much pimping her out and then she meets a navy recruiter and gets in the military and you know her story is very broken down i'm sure there's a lot more to it but yeah these were just some accounts of people and i did have a dfs story which you can look it up um because i don't want to make this too long but this girl she was getting um her foster family was pretty much pimping her pimping them out like 
the foster actual home where the girls were. She has a lawsuit with them now on it because I guess it, it was happening a lot. And this was out of the state of Indiana, if you want to look in that. But I don't know, man. It's hard being a woman. It's hard being a man. It's hard just it all. But these stories are just some accounts on human trafficking, how... You know, the need for money or the love for money gets you in it. Um, just how just something as, as small as taking a trip with your sister to going to Target to going to Walmart to going anywhere. Like you have to have your surround, you have to check your surroundings. You know, I know that we have a lot of distractions with our phones and everything else now, but you have to keep, as I like to say, keep your antennas up and just stay prayed up most importantly um but yeah guys um this was a heavy one but it's something that I'm very passionate about because it's something that happens a lot and especially to minority communities um it happens a lot there's a lot of runaways there's a lot of just I mean there's organ harvesting I mean you name it if you believe in all that stuff. I mean, it is a lot that goes on. So be aware, be safe. And yeah, if you see something reported, um, as you can see, some of these people's accounts were hotels, even one of mine's where I can't, <clears throat> I'm not a hundred percent sure, certain that that's what it was, but I mean, I have intuition. I saw those young girls and I saw, how they were dressed and it was late at night and it was just sketchy 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 so I know a lot of the hotels they only are going to see the money they're not going to really do or say anything unless somebody reports it and it would have to be somebody big I mean the New England Patriots owner got caught in a sex trafficking in Florida so we know it's real it just depends on who's going to snitch on who really honestly we're still waiting on Glenn Maxwell's black book that has never surfaced. So don't think it's just the rich and famous, though. It is happening locally. It's happening. I mean, it's a fast way to make money. So just stay woke. That's what I consider staying woke. All right. This is Tits and Giggles signing off, guys. Be safe out there.